Okay, Aaron. One more time. Are you sure you can do this? You're confident, right? You know what the menu item is called? Yes. I have a secret weapon. Okay, what's your secret weapon? Well, I am currently searching through menus to see which one has the vibes I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, not good. Aaron, is the secret weapon you? No, 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 oh no, no. God. Welcome to After Hours with the Visual Studio team. And today we're going to show upcoming improvements to feature search in Visual Studio. It takes your search query and uses GitHub Copilot to elaborate on instructions, help you find settings, and more. Because we, as developers, all know that Visual Studio is quite powerful. And sometimes you just forget what a menu item is called. Uh, new capabilities get added to new versions. And there's always maybe a better way uh, to complete a task in Visual Studio. Right. But with this being feature search, which is already an empty text box, sometimes text boxes that you don't know how to use or aren't giving the results you're looking for can be a little bit intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. Like, do I talk to it in full sentences? Do I type keywords like I usually do with Control Q and expect Copilot to make sense of it? Like, do I go straight to the AI to help me find what I'm looking for in Visual Studio? Um, how is this better than feature search itself? These are all things I need to figure out. All good questions. So let's explore the experience and the engineering behind the upcoming improvements we're making to feature search in Visual Studio. I'm Leah, and I'm a product manager for Search in Visual Studio. I'm Aaron, a product manager working on GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio. And I'm Sandy. I'm a developer who works on Search in Visual Studio. Here I am in Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and hit the Search button up here, and that's going to bring up Feature Search, which can also be summoned with Control Q. This has been around for a while. You may be familiar with it. You can type something like, I want to see all of my breakpoints. So you type the breakpoint window. And there it is, hit enter, and there are your breakpoints. Wonderful. Uh, but we know that sometimes users don't know the name of the thing that they're looking for, especially newer users. They might bring up feature search, and they might type something like, uh, I want to change my shortcuts, so let's edit shortcuts. But the responses that come back aren't really what the user is looking for. It's a bunch of you know commands, shortcuts <laughs> that exist under the edit menu. So we're going to try this new button that has shown up under the search. You're going to click Ask Copilot. And that same query that the user typed is being sent to Copilot Chat. And Copilot Chat is going to respond and give actually a pretty accurate response <laughs> about exactly where to go. Go to Tools Options, find the keyboard section of the Options dialog. Uh, it's described quite thoroughly, knows about the Assign button. Uh, it even offers follow up questions. So, actually, a really useful way to ask questions without having to leave the IDE. Um, you know, these are nuanced questions. Um, another similar sort of scenario would be maybe you've come from, you know, .NET Core and you're used to doing stuff on the command line and you don't actually know how to do a NuGet restore in the IDE. Maybe it's one of these things. You could click it and explore or you could go ahead and you could just ask Copilot. Same thing. Send it straight to the chat, wait a little bit, and Copilot's going to respond and let us know that you can just right click on the solution and that there's a restore NuGet packages option. Uh, it also tells you other ways that you can achieve the same functionality. It even talks about using the package manager console if that's sort of a way that you like to develop. Historically, Copilot's you know mostly known about kind of long established features in Visual Studio, but you know we're adding things all the time, and so you know we've updated Copilot to be able to understand about newer features coming into the IDE. So for example, if you are a, um, a user who has you've seen on blogs or on Twitter or something about rainbow colored parentheses, it seems really cool. So you come into the chat, or you come into the feature search and you type rainbow parens and there's nothing useful here. That's because you don't know what it's actually called. Again, you ask Copilot. Send the question to chat, wait for its response, and all of a sudden it says, yeah, yeah, you can totally turn on rainbow parentheses. But in Visual Studio, we call that brace pair colorization. It says, go to tools options, go to general under the editor, and bam, enable brace pair colorization. So that is uh, 
Copilot Chat integrated with Feature Search. Hope you enjoy it. So I know that when I watch any demo as a developer, I have to wonder, how do I know that this AI works well for my situation or that it can be trusted to provide answers that aren't going to confuse me more? Uh, so I'm curious, um, what have we done to the feature search in Visual Studio with GitHub Copilot that's different from a web search and different from other AIs? Yeah, definitely. One thing that's uh, different from online search engines is that with online search engines, there's a much broader scope of things that it's looking at. So if you're trying to search for something that's a feature in Visual Studio, it's it's really easy to come across results that are actually about Visual Studio Code instead because of the similar naming scheme. And there's even confusions with people online who don't know the difference between the two products. So the answers that you get from places like Stack Overflow or elsewhere might not be entirely accurate. And there's also a lot of uh, out of date information online, which we don't have in the model as much because we're able to provide it with up to date information about what are the features that are currently available in the version of Visual Studio that you're currently using? Yeah, and because of that uh, additional knowledge, it knows more about the newer features that the other models and other uh, AI models doesn't know about because it's trained on much older data and doesn't have that direct access to the information that we have. I thought it was really interesting that you've mentioned up-to-date and specific information that you've added to the Ask Copilot feature in Visual Studio, uh, because I can relate to out-of-date information and settings or feature names changing. So could you talk about exactly what it is we've added um, to bring this up-to-date awareness to GitHub Copilot? Yeah, well, I think a lot of Visual Studio users are are pretty used to being able to uh, navigate to settings, uh, commands, new features, what's new, all those sorts of things, uh, using the control Q feature search that we've had for a long time. Um, and so what's going on here is we've got an integration between that existing feature search uh, and Copilot chat, where if you are in control Q and you're not finding what you're looking for, now you've got a button to take you to Copilot chat to have a more nuanced discussion. And then on the chat side, uh, we're able to pull in all of that stuff that uh, Visual Studio already knows about itself uh, and make that context available yeah, instead of, um, you know, as Leah mentioned, when you're talking to ChatGPT or another uh, AI, it's trained on older data because training is an expensive thing. Usually the models are fairly out of date. So you might get really great information for things that have been in Visual Studio forever, but you might not be able to get good answers about the latest and greatest. And so that's where bringing in the information from feature search helps you better find niche features, new features, uh, things like that. And um, yeah, you get a little more, um, uh, you get a more uh, carefully crafted sort of uh, experience um, that's really tailored to what a Visual Studio user is probably asking about, whether they're starting in the search or in the chat. Gotcha. So it sounds to me like we've done some rag, like retrieval augmented generation, where we added an awareness of keywords, of settings and features from feature search, um, and also other resources like what's new information that someone might have written for a new release. Is that right? Um, you know, it's a. We're starting with uh, settings and commands and uh, some other sources. Uh, what's new is coming down the pipe, and we also have uh, aspirations to bring in other uh, sources using what you mentioned, uh, retrieval augmented generation, where you you bring in uh, known good information into uh, the AI, and so it's able to give uh, more accurate responses uh, for a, a really specific scenario, in our case, asking about Visual Studio. Um, so yeah. I see. And when I often look up instructions for something on the web, I notice that I have to first understand it and then figure out where to click in the editor um, or how to do something myself. Because they may say, go do a new get restore and I have to figure out, hey, what does this mean? How do I do that? Um, and so could you tell me more about how this feature um, helps me 
spend less time translating something that I've understood and actually making something happen in Visual Studio? Um, sure. Well, the idea is that, you know, even if you don't know the name that Visual Studio uses for some feature, um, one thing that an AI is really great at is understanding what you're trying to say. And so having that um, pipeline from, you know, your, your brain uh, to what does a feature kind of look like in an IDE and the AI understands that it's bringing in the specific uh, terms for things in Visual Studio. Uh, we're able to provide nice, accurate instructions, you know, even if you don't really know uh, how the right way to describe what you're looking for, as long as you get close, uh, having an AI helps you get a little bit closer instead of spending, you know, 20 minutes on Google searches and still not quite finding exactly what it is you're looking for. Right. And these link outs and these settings, we, we link out to the actual setting, right? So if you tell me to change a setting, there should be a link for me that will take me to that setting. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, you know, when we detect that you know something in the in the response from the AI is is a setting that we know about, we provide a link so that you can get directly there without necessarily have to follow step one, two, three, four, five. Although sometimes it's nice to see those explicit steps if you're trying to understand uh, how to teach uh, the feature that you're uh, looking for. Right. And so switching gears a little bit from the data science work to the experience itself, um, from what we're seeing today in preview, what do you think is left for room for improvement that we want to build or work on in the future? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to look about it. So there's the basic feature search experience that we've already had in the product. So there is definitely room for us to improve to make sure that it's covering the right scenarios there, make sure it's handling differently formatted queries correctly. And that's like without AI even in the picture. But on the side with the work that we've been doing with AI, there's definitely more opportunities like we discussed before to bring in more context from different sources to make sure that the answers we're providing is accurate and it provides the right details. But at the same time, we don't want to provide too much information to overwhelm the model or confuse it or bias it in a certain way. So there needs to be some work done to make sure that we're picking the right context to send over to the model and provide correct responses from that. And on the, that note, there's also um, more UX work that we need to finish up with the uh, flow that we've been working on because there's some things that aren't uh, exactly smooth with the experience. So we want to work on with the, uh, the links that it provides, the way that it words the responses we want to make sure that it's actually providing helpful information there and actionable information that the user can figure out what to do with and it's not just providing things that uh, they don't know how to act on yeah i mean that sounds great because we would want feature search to work well with and without copilot and it sounds like any improvements that we make to that will also improve copilot and you know, speaking with the team that's building a feature that helps you um, resolve any unit test failures, they also spoke about, you know, being really selective with your context so you can provide a good, precise answer. For our listeners, if you haven't already tried it, the default shortcut for using feature search is control Q. Um, so do give that a try. Um, is there any specific feedback or kinds of feedback that we're looking for from our customers um, as they try feature search and feature search with GitHub Copilot, that can help us build a better feature. Yeah, so uh, the t accuracy of results is definitely one thing that we're continuing to figure out how to measure and figuring out ways to improve. With the uh, feature search on its own, that is available in the product for everyone to try out, but the integration with Copilot is still an internal only feature because we're trying to iron out some of the details with the user experience and make sure we're providing uh, results that are high enough quality that we're ready to share to external users. So uh, one way to, I guess, test the accuracy of the AI is to try asking the chat directly if it's able to figure out things, but that wouldn't have the context that we're bringing into search. I'm not really sure what else we can answer with this question. Gotcha. So in the meantime, give control Q a try. See if it's able to provide a result for something that you're looking for. And if you're not, leave us a comment below or 
use the report a problem feature in the top right of Visual Studio so that we can keep track of scenarios that aren't working well for you. Um, and that's also one way um, to make sure that we have a direct line of communication with you as a user. The thing that we'll do is that if you subscribe um, or if you take a look at the description in this video, uh, once we do have um, what we demoed available for you to try, we will have the instructions in the description. Um, so switching gears a little bit to the overall search space, it's great that we've got AI to improve feature search, but what about code search? I know that sometimes when I'm hopping between different solutions and projects that I'm not always familiar enough with a code base to know what keywords to use uh, with the existing code search and control T, um, but also find um, and the find and replace experiences. Um, so could we speak to perhaps any thing that we're thinking about with la natural language code search? Yeah, definitely. For our team specifically, since we own a lot of those search features, like the uh, code search experience and find and files, we're sort of actively thinking about ways that AI might be able to fit in and help users find the answers that they're looking for without having to do a normal keyword search. Because there are some scenarios that are better formed as a natural language query or are sort of too complex to figure out the keyword search or even a regular expression query to find the answers that you need. So we definitely want to look into that space in the future and explore what technology is available to help provide those answers and figure out the right user experience for it as well, because we don't want to interfere with the existing scenarios that people have grown really accustomed to with find and files and the existing code search. So we need to, um, sort of IDA, do some more investigation work on our end to figure out what's the right way to bring in these sorts of uh, AI powered experiences without to, taking away from the existing keyword searches today. Gotcha. So it sounds like the keyword searches are very well loved and that we are thinking about natural language code search, but if we do it, we have to make sure that um, it doesn't disrupt the current experience while feeling in the user's flow. And what about some of the other experiences outside of Control T? Um, what's happening there, Sandy? Yeah, so I mean, there are other places where natural language search is becoming a part of the Visual Studio experience. So, uh, for example, in in Copilot Chat, you can you know make a direct reference to your solution, uh, and this works uh, across languages. Um, the context from your solution is kind of brought in when you make a query uh, to Copilot. And so you're able to ask a question like, uh, where's the code that processes uh, customer invoices? Um, and you know that might that code might have an obscure name and you're not sure how to find it in Control T because you're new to the code base. But by asking a, a, a contextual question like that and by bringing in the, uh, that reference to the solution, uh, the AI is often able to help and and not tell you not only like where it is, but to give you a nice description of how this code works and what are the methods and other types that are involved. Right, and even though when we think about code navigation, we have find all implementations, I feel like there's still a gap where, hey, I'd like to find all my synchronous methods because I'd like to refactor them to be async, or maybe I'd like to find all asynchronous methods that don't take a cancellation token, or maybe something as simple as, hey, where are the various authentication handlers because I want to understand the different flows of authentication token in my code base. That we have started releasing internally and we're going to be asking people to adopt with it soon to help us uh, build that to, uh, quality and make sure we're getting it to a point where it is actually ready for users to start consuming and providing feedback to. As, as you know, we still need to do a lot of work to make sure that the model is providing accurate responses, that it's utilizing the context that we're providing correctly, and that the user experience for um, handling responses is smooth and seamless as well, so that users are actually able to act on it and not to, or aren't only provided with a response that they don't know what to do with. Right. I feel like one of my frustrations with using search engines or other forms of AI is some when it gives you an answer that's actually inaccurate, you burn cycles trying to figure out whether you are wrong or right. 
Um, but in the meantime, since this uses feature search, would it be valuable for users to provide feedback on feature search scenarios? So control Q uh, that doesn't give them the answers or settings that they're looking for. Yeah, definitely. We're actively working on building test cases and exploring different scenarios to make sure that the work that we are doing is actually impactful and is actually solving real customer problems. So any feedback you can provide about what scenarios aren't covered today in the IDE or scenarios that you would like to see covered would be really helpful for helping us determine what to do next. 